Today I'm gonna to give you some pruning tips while I do some pruning, trimming, and cutting back some of the, uh, the fruit trees and the bushes around here. As you know, plant maintenance is a really important part of maintaining a garden for the health of the plants, even the aesthetics of the garden overall, and it's a friendly kind of upkeep for your neighboring plants. I'll be using various tools that were sent to me by Centurion. Thank you Centurion for sponsoring today's episode. Keep in mind that you don't need all the tools in the world to have a garden, but what I've learned is that using the right tools for the right job really makes my life a lot easier. Without having the right tools, it takes me at least five times as long to work because I'm quite petite and my fingers and wrists would end up hurting for the next few days. For the pruning today, I'll be using these tools and these are the mini cutting tools, which I'm really excited about because uh, they seem a lot easier for me to work with. More about these tools later, but now let's talk about the basics of pruning. Before you start pruning, you wanna ask yourself why you're doing it. For example, do you want to cut it way back to encourage new growth, vegetative growth for your herbs, uh, perennial herbs especially, or do you want to prune back to encourage more blooms such as your roses or hydrangeas, any kind of perennials that have spent flowers? Or say fruit trees, do you want to prune it into a bush or a tree form? For me, it would be a tree form because of limited space. I have a understory plants growing, so I want to open up more space. Or for your neighboring plants, you don't want to overcrowd, which would block out the light and space. So keeping them pruned on a regular basis would be really helpful. So for my case, it's definitely about pruning to keep things on a smaller scale, making everything more manageable. Things that I'll be pruning and trimming back today will be the green and purple tree collards, the mulberry and calamansi trees. These fruit trees are sort of like the ever bearing because they fruit multiple times a year in my zone, in zone 10. These two trees are very hardy, but the mulberries especially is very fast growing. Also the fruits for these type of trees seem to be growing a lot more on the newer growth. So pruning is highly, highly encouraged and it helps to stimulate new growth, pushing out more flowers and more fruits. And this Mexican honeysuckle, even though it's got lots of blooms right now, I'm still going to prune it just a little bit. There are still lots of new buds coming out on the the deeper, the lower parts of the branches. For the calamansi seed, I really wanna open it up a little more to allow light to come through. When it comes to pruning, it really all depends on the types of fruit trees or flowers that you grow. But what I'm sharing with you is more of a general rule of thumb. For citrus especially, you mainly want to prune it in the winter time. That's because the flower buds will start coming after it, you know, it leaves the cold period but for me i usually start to prune back a little bit after i pick off all the fruits and that would encourage it to produce more new growth when pruning you generally would take away just 20 to 30 percent of the plant for perennials such as rosemary, thyme, oregano, even salvia, you can cut them back to up to a third size because these plants will get stimulated to grow a lot more vegetation, which is really great when you want, you know, really friggin' herbs. They're usually better uh, when you're picking the younger leaves. All right, let the pruning begin. Just going to start off with this mulberry tree, doing some quick cuts with this mini compound action bypass lopper. Here are the two branches that are really close together. I'm going to cut this as well. I'm trying to not let any of the branches cross too much. I'm trying to promote good airflow. <laughs> Mulberries like to fruit on the lower branches. So to keep the tree small, I like to give it a good pruning after we harvest all the fruits. Also, I want to just kind of create a better airflow and um, lighting, especially next to and a bit behind this uh, mulberry tree is actually the purple tree collards. I want to open up this space to bring in more light for the purple tree collards. The upper blade of this lopper is made with high carbon heat treated nonstick coating. So it really helps to make those sharp cuts I love it when tools are lightweight because it doesn't make me feel exhausted before I even start the job. <laughs> the soft touch hand grip really makes it comfortable to hold. Okay, as you see, I already opened up some of the space here. Then I'm gonna be cutting back the purple tree collards. Don't forget these are really good for juice and smoothies. Love being able to bring more light to the space. Purple tree collards tend to grow very kind of bushy, but kind of linky at the same time. Now I'm just continuing to open up that space so I can plant something on the bottom. Also to prune it, you would stimulate the plant to put on more new growth that's much closer to the main stem. Now I'm going to be doing some cleanup work on this calamansi. This is similar to a kumquat, if you guys are familiar with that. It's a tiny little citrus. 
The fruits are just really fragrant. Mm. Okay, now I'm gonna take this bypass pruner to uh, trim off this, uh, all the little growth on the bottom. Well, this pruner works really well on cutting green growth, anything that's a new growth before it turns to wood. The objective to pruning this tree is to provide more light for the understory plants. So trimming off all the, you know, extra growth on the bottom here, opening up a little bit more of the branches on the top and taking down the height just a bit with the saw later. The nonstick coating on the pruner helps to prevent corrosion and it makes these cuts clean. The anti-slip really helps with the grip. In the summer, your trees and shrubs should be giving a lot of growth, so it's more about maintaining the size and shape of your, your trees. You're not doing a whole lot of pruning, just kind of going in and remove leaves that have fungal or disease or any kind of pest issues, uh, leaf miners, or any kind of dead wood, that just dead parts that you want to remove. Here is a lateral branch. If this is as far as where I want the branch to grow, I'll just go ahead and take a little snip at the top here so it stops the growth and that would push all the side shoots to grow out. Here's a cluster of branches. You can see there are some just really tight growing towards each other, crossing. You don't want that. So in a light pruning job, you would just kind of go in and remove anything crossing. For example, this one right here, you actually want to encourage growth growing outwards. And that one in the back, do you see that? This one is also crossing. So summertime is more about doing the detailing of the pruning. Let's show you how this tree fruits. Here we got the main stem. It's very woody, very, very old growth. And then all in the, along the sides, the lateral growth, these are semi hard wood. And then you get the new growth as you follow along here. And on these lateral branches, here is another branch growing out of it. And this is where the fruit would form. The flowers would develop on the tips of these branches. And oh, there we go. I missed that. I got to take that out because it's shooting straight up. It's a little bit of dead growth there. So any part that's difficult to do, I would go in with the lopper. Remember to cut at a bit of an angle. It's a little hard to reach in this tight spot. There we go. No crossing branch. No crossing branch. Okay, I'm gonna try taking that branch out with this 21 inch bypass lopper. I like that this durable steel handle has got the soft grip for me. And what's nice about having longer loppers is that I don't always have to stand on a ladder to work, but it is heavier than the mini. Okay, this lopper can cut up to one and a half inch diameter. Oof. Now it's time to use the triple cut seven inch folding saw to take down the height. This thing actually locks in place. This is a hardened carbon steel blade. The teeth are triple ground for heavy duty cuts. Okay, yay. In order to get the tree shorter, I really had to go in and cut those old growth down. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna take that one down. So by cutting this portion out, it's going to encourage all the side shoots here, creating a more dense and fuller tree. I originally planned on just cutting the center stem since it's the tallest part of the tree, but there were other stems that were in the way. In order to get to that stem, I had to cut the ones in front. So I thought this is just a good time to get the tree shorter. And I'm not too worried about doing a hard pruning right now since we have a pretty long growing season. What's really nice about having a little saw is that it can get into tight spaces better. To make a clean cut on these thicker branches, I like to saw a little bit on the bottom to avoid it from stripping. One by one, those stems went down and finally I was able to reach the center and here it goes. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> 
A couple things I really like about this saw is that one, it folds down like this and it comes with the safety lock feature. So when it closes, it actually clicks, uh, preventing it from snapping, you know, cutting your finger. And then you can actually press on that and close it completely. I know I mentioned the rule of thumb of pruning something is about 20 to 30% of the tree or plant to avoid shock. Now, in some situations, you may want to give it a more heavier pruning, for example, to uh, get it smaller so you can fit some sort of uh, frost protection or, or heat protection over your tree. But in my case, we haven't pruned this tree in years. That's because this is a, a tree that fruits multiple times a year. It constantly gives us new buds, more fruits. So it was really hard to uh, to prune it, but you really should do it on a regular basis at least uh, you know once a year to maintain the size that you want. So I basically took down half the size of this tree. It's just so that we can actually reach for the fruit. This is a much more hardy citrus. It fruits mostly year round for us. Unlike other, you know, like oranges or something, you would not want to give it this heavy of a pruning, especially in the summertime. Ideally, if you want to prune back a tree quite a lot, you would want to spend about two to three years to do it, little by little each year. If you do give it a really heavy pruning like this with your other citrus, you may be looking at it not fruiting for a year or two. That's something to keep in mind, but also know that when you're pruning, you're also setting the tree up for the future. So looking at it as long-term, I think this is worth it for me. Let's get a closer look at the tree. I did plant some cucumbers, going to allow it to trellis up this tree now that it's more bare. And you can see there are multiple tree trunks. Normally you would just pick one and allow that to be the main stem, let it grow up, and then it would split on the top with all these lateral branches. But in my case, when I planted this, I actually didn't know anything about pruning, but you can see even having multiple main stems, it doesn't affect the fruiting during the major fruiting period. This tree would bear 20, even 30 pounds of fruits each day as we pick. Also, citrus just kind of like growing a lot more dense and you can definitely train them to be a bush. Look at this. It even fruits on the lower branches. And if there's any suckers that come out from the bottom, you should definitely remove, especially if you have a grafted tree. Citrus fruits have thorns, so when you're pruning it, be sure to wear gloves, because otherwise, let's just say, I think I need better gloves. My experience was bloody painful. Now I'm with my patch of mint. I'm gonna talk about trimming, and this would apply to your other perennial herbs such as oregano, thyme, uh, anything you want to kind of take back, the, uh, take down the size because the fresh growth is actually more aromatic when it comes to herbs, especially with the strawberry mint. It really wants to get cut back constantly. So the more often you harvest them to enjoy, the fresher your patch will be. For example, this strawberry mint, it just gets so woody on the bottom. So I really want to, you know, stimulate it to get more uh, new growth. So with something like this, I like to use the mini head shear to do a really quick, just chop, 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 and then it'll be done, especially if you have a larger patch. But for smaller patches, you can just simply use just a pair of uh, regular scissors. But with a six inch steel blade, it's going to get the job done really quickly. It just after a couple of sniffs, I was able to pretty much clear this out. Look how much nicer this fresh growth is. Here's the Mexican honeysuckle. This is a bush. So you could follow this guide as a general rule to how you would prune your perennials, like your bushes. Usually you would want to take it about a third back. The Mexican honeysuckle is a perennial. Most perennials, uh, you don't have to be so concerned about pruning it back. You can prune even two thirds of the plant, especially one that is well established like this one. For example, this branch is growing from the node right here, really close to the ground. Look how nice the new growth are. The leaves are just bigger. They're just nicer all around compared to the ones with a bit more woody stems. These are the older growths that are just like flowering again. The, the leaves are quite small. A bush this messy that takes a lot of work, you can either go back on the bottom and just kind of cut it down, or you can use the mini head shear and trim off about, I think I'm gonna do, we'll see. We'll see how much I'm willing to do. I know it looks like it's such a bad job right now, but this is just a really quick way to take down a bush. 
I'm so glad that this shear is so lightweight. It makes it easy for me to do the job quickly. You can see just like that, I've trimmed it down a lot. I'm glad the hand grip has a soft touch. It's really helpful when you're doing those repetitive actions. I know this looks like a really bad hair job right now, but once the bush grows back again, it's going to be a lot more compact, a lot more uh, dense. These blades are sharp. Just one last chop right there. Since these are Mexican honeysuckles, I can actually dry the flowers and leaves for tea. Okay. Well, this took what, like a couple minutes literally, and I'm done. I'm now under the giant green tree collard. Let's talk about balance. Now, when you properly prune a tree to give it that symmetrical shape, the tree would be less likely to tip over or break branches, especially when there's too many fruits on one branch. Now, of course, there are some aesthetics too, like asymmetrical ones that kind of has this beautiful funky curve to it it's all really beautiful but uh, you try to strive that sort of a balance so that it wouldn't be too heavy on one side just like this green tree collar it's roughly about 12 to 15 feet tall uh, after you know multiple rainstorms it eventually did uh, collapsed a bit so we have to put a latch on to pull it back. So it is now still at a slant and I'm seeing that there's all these, you know, shoots that came out and um, it's really getting a bit too heavy on one side. So what I'll be doing is just to remove a couple of the larger branches that are really kind of leaning one direction. If I don't remove it, it's eventually going to tear out and uh, that Ooh. might uh, injure okay. the plant. <sighs> Remember to not wait too long until things get too big and difficult to remove. Thank you so much you guys for making this far in the video. If you want to check out any of these tools, I will put a link below. And thank you to Centurion for sponsoring today's episode. Like and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you right back here in the next one. Bye.